So here's my wildly extravagant set of metallic watercolour paints that I bought for one pound from the range. And what I want to do is swatch them out and see what they're like. And if they're lovely, or at least passable, then I want to do a picture with them. If they're horrible, well, they will be consigned to the bottom of an art drawer somewhere. What I'm doing is adding some water to each pan because I know that all metallics just take a little while to release their colour and pre-wetting them either with a dropper or a spray just means that that colour is a lot easier to work with. I'm going to swatch out on black and white paper. This is Etival from Clairefontaine 300 grams for 140. The white one is from Canson, so it is a cellulose paper. It's not the best in the world, but it's perfectly passable. So that's Montval from Canson. Now, this is a sort of pearly, and I'm interested to see how opaque it is on the black. Now, obviously, it's going to hardly show on the white. Actually, that's interesting. On the white, it takes on a real yellowy tinge. I wonder if my brush wasn't quite clean. Now we've got a very pale gold. Well, that's quite pretty, isn't it? But possibly a little insipid on the white. Certainly more striking on the black. Sort of oldy gold colour. It's pretty yellow and shows up pretty well on the white as well. And we've got this silvery grey colour. Definitely looks silver on the black. Sort of more pewter on the white. We've now got a sort of coppery coppery gold colour which is rather rather lovely and then we've got a proper copper which is really I red that might be interesting just to see how it thins out just taking some clean water and seeing how we can sort of thin it and sort of blend it out I will hold off judgment until it's dry because with watercolours they do have that colour shift when it dries so let's let's just give that a little bit of time to sit and we'll see how it is. They definitely look shinier on the black paper that's no surprise but on the white they have got a nice glimmer and I'm quite impressed with their sort of covering power so what I think would be really nice to do is a little paint and I wondered about using this birch tree as my or this little forest of birch trees as my inspiration because the colours could work really nicely and I could do this on black or white paper. So I've got a small piece of Canson paper, um, rough size if you're in inches or about 10 inches by 5 if you're in centimetres, what's that, 20, 25, 26, 26 by, yeah, 12, 13. And what I thought I would do is mask off the trunks. And rather than using mas masking fluid, I thought I would use masking tape. I thought it'd just be a bit quicker and it might be interesting. And to get a natural looking edge to the tree trunks, rip the masking tape, place it and then put the straight edges together so the straight edges are inside because if you had straight edges sort of down the outside no tree trunk in the world is that straight. All right I hope that looks like a vaguely plausible forest of um, trunks and I'm just making sure that tape is well pressed down because I don't want the paint to sort of seep under. If it does, we'll deal with it when it happens. So the nice bit about painting this way is we can splish and splosh that paint on to our heart's content and it really won't matter. No point using the, the pearly stuff. So I'm going to just mix these and see how it goes. might try and sort of keep a little darker towards the bottom so that it feels like there's a bit of sunlight going on. I really like this coppery colour, it's lovely. What might be quite fun to do 
is to pick up some of the paint and tap it in. This metallic paint, most metallic paints don't particularly seem to spread so we'll get soft edges but it will stay where it sort of sits to a large extent. So it will give me the impression of the leaves and, and so forth. And hey, I love making a mess. It is obviously going to take a while to dry, so it's kind of time for a cup of tea. Well, that took forever to dry. So now what we need to do is carefully peel off the masking tape, making sure we don't rip the paper because that's kind of easy to do. So just do it slowly. And if anything starts ripping, stop and come back the other way. And you'll find paper is particularly prone to ripping if it's not quite dry. And you'll also find that uh, cotton paper doesn't rip um, as easily. This is actually cellulose paper, so it's more likely to rip. I'm pleased that the paint doesn't seem to have seeped under the masking tape at all because it's sort of thicker and slightly gluier than ordinary watercolour paint. It hasn't done that which is kind of cool so I've got really sharp lines. I think that was back to our reference. These are our trunks and now we can start to get in these gorgeous markings. I'm going to cut a little strip of watercolour paper and I'm going to print some of these sort of thin little branches across and I'm also going to use a little bit of it to uh, put some of the dark markings on. I'm hoping the dark grey that we've got is going to be dark enough. Well, tough if it isn't because I'm trying to stick to this palette. So I'm sort of just pulling and scraping. Do you know what? I think that'll be okay. Well, that's quite nice if you sort of pull in like that and do a little bit of printing as well. Actually, if you pull in from the side, it slightly softens the effect of the, the hard edges. So I'm going to do that across all of them, but aim to get these really random. We don't want anything overly regular because nothing in nature is terribly regular, is it? And because the water's really sunk into these paints, they are really gluppy and gluey. But that is actually perfect for trying to get these marks. I don't want it sort of too runny. You could, of course, do this with your brush if you don't want to, but I think it's sometimes fun to use different tools to make marks it gives a sort of different quality to your line now we just need to think because the idea here was that um we had some of the foliage coming in sort of in front so i might just sort of take some of it and make it into something a bit more distinctly foliage that makes sense. Again, you've got to make it look quite random. And if you don't think your brush marks are random enough, we could just do that. Going on top of a couple of these bigger, the bigger trunks would logically be closer to us. So I'm just going to try and darken a couple of the marks by layering a bit more. And then the final thing I'd like to do is put some of those very thin branches. Now I've got a again a little bit of watercolour paper and ideally what I'd like to do is print with this. Now the big question is will that show up? Oh that's all right isn't it? Apart from the large blob on the bottom. And the reason I like printing is it just is a little bit more random than if I'd used a bigger brush or something and it just looks a little bit more natural because if you use a rigger, 
it's almost too even to tear that so it's a bit shorter. Then maybe like that. The final thing I want to do, because again, I don't know if you can see that just in a few places you've got a little bit of a few leaves in front. So I thought if I grab some of this mid gold and then just very gently do a little bit of random splatter. So large and smaller little marks and I probably do that in two colours. So all we've got to do is carefully remove the tape that we put round the side. And again, just as we, with the masking tape, just do it carefully. So let me wiggle that around for you so you can see the shine of those metallics. So that was done with that little set of one pound watercolours. I actually think it's quite effective and I have to eat my words about always buying the most uh, the best quality watercolours that you can afford because actually for a quid you know that's amazing. Mm -hmm.